He's the human highlight film. He's got to dominate. Dominate on the fly, in the sky, knock it in. Baseline drive, Dominic. Oh, my goodness. Dominique Wilkins got his nickname long before arriving in Atlanta. The high-flying hawk heard it first in North Carolina at the age of 17. I couldn't understand how I was going this, these points. I was this skinny kid, 180 pounds, and, you know, slipping, sliding through people. So they said I had to roll the film back to keep seeing what I was doing, and they still couldn't figure it out. So that's how I got his name. In 1979, Dominique was the main attraction in Little Washington leading the team to back-to-back -back titles, two undefeated seasons. You could say he kind of jumped out, <laughs> jumped out at you because, uh, you know, what, what an explosive leaper he was. Dominique landed in Athens, Georgia, with coach Hugh Durham's Bulldogs. The day that he signed uh, to go to the University of Georgia, we all left the Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Me and all, all the other seven kids. They'd wear the red Georgia pulled off from head to toe, and I'd be cheering and everything, and that was great. Coach Durham had recruited a Fab Four freshman class. Terry Fair, Lamar Hurd, Derek Floyd, and Dominique. The human highlight film, Georgia's All Everything. I had to live up to that nickname, so you know, I had to come in with a lot of confidence. Here, watch the stuff by Dominique. His dynamic play led to an early season double overtime win over sixth ranked LSU and a national reputation. We constantly had reporters in and out of the room, everybody wanting to see him, meet him, get an autograph, and things like that. Well, if he picks it off, he'll go under wide open stuff. The young dogs won nine of their first 12 games, but the Cinderella run would end in Alabama. My knee went one way, my foot stayed there. Wasn't anything other than just probably a physical play inside. I thought that my career was over, actually, because, you know, you see your knee swell up in seconds. You know, you're like, oh, I'm just done. A severe strain would sideline him for six weeks. With Dominique on the bench, the dogs were done. We leaned heavily on Dominique. When Dominic wasn't there, we lost too many close games. In the fall of 1980, Herschel Walker arrived in Athens like a freight train. The following spring, in Stegman Coliseum, Dominic reminded Georgia fans of the other game in town. We had the football players interested in coming to watch us now rather than us just going to watch them. Dominique averaged more than 20 points a game, but it was the way he scored, like a live wire. It seems strange that a, a ball player of your caliber would go down to Georgia that didn't have tradition. They're known for football. Right, that's true. I just wanted to go to a school to help build a tradition. Dominique led the dogs to 19 wins and a spot in the National Invitational Tournament. He considered turning pro after only one complete college season, a surprising move for the times. I basically said, hey, the money is there. You can just take it whenever you get ready. I said, Mom, what should I do? You getting food stamps, you're on welfare. I don't like that. I said, well, I'll tell you what you do. I know I need you, your help, but you go in the room and you say a prayer. And when you come out, the decision that you make, that's what you do. Mentally, I just wasn't ready. Dominique would have one more run in Athens before a starring role on the grandest stage of all. He meant a lot to Atlanta. He was basically the man, you know, just like Ted Turner, the man here in Atlanta. He was the man here. Utah Jazz, choose Dominique. He was almost the man in Salt Lake City. Utah took him with the third overall pick in 1982. But Ted Turner saw a potential gold mine in the former Georgia star. The media mogul gave the Jazz a million dollars and two proven players, including veteran John Drew, for the rookie. 
John Drew was one of the eldest statesmen of the team. To get win of, you know, John Drew getting traded for a rookie, you know, it almost blew us out of, off our feet. The rookie made the deal seem like a steal. By 1984, Dominique was the Hawks' leading scorer. He bought his mother a house and showered his little brothers and sisters with his newfound wealth. Dami was able to do things and make me happy. It wasn't anything that I wanted that he wouldn't get for me. You know, anywhere I wanted to go, he wouldn't send me. And he wouldn't just send me, he'd send me and two of my friends. His little brother Gerald followed him into the league in 1985. A guard for the Knicks, Gerald was workmanlike. Nothing like Dominique. Spun with the alley oop and knee. Oh, oh! Just show it up there. He was spectacular. I mean, just spectacular. Uh, the dunks, the explosions to the basket. Would be just like thunder, like boom. Dominique ahead of the field. Dominique reached his biggest audience that year at the second annual slam dunk competition. He faced off against a talented rookie named Michael Jordan. Dominique took the individual trophy, but he wanted a championship. I asked him, what do you think you can do for this team? And he said, I think I can score more and help us win more basketball games. Nice pass inside. to win 57 games and he wound up leading the NBA in scoring over 30 points per game so I think he pretty much called the shot. Got his own rebound again. Yeah. The man is possessed. The Hawks would win the Atlantic Division and cruise through the first round of the playoffs. Atlanta would have to play the defending champion Boston Celtics to move on. Frenetic Hawks, led by the Freakazoid, had old school Boston by the throat. Up three games to two in the best of seven series. All Atlanta has to do is go down to Atlanta and close the series out. We blew the opportunity. The bird, high arc, yes. Lost them. I think in the last 10 seconds of that game. Livingston, no. Boston has won the game. Number 21 would need a win in historic Boston Garden for a shot at the title. I'll never forget Zoe came in the locker room and said, we're going to win a bleep, bleep, bleep game. And if you're not going to fight, don't come up here. Game seven would go down as one of the greatest games in NBA history. Dominic was an unstoppable player. No guy could guard him in the league man for man. You could see his competitiveness. You could see his determination in that game seven. There was only one player on the floor who could match his will. Dominique had 47 points, but he was denied a final chance at 50. There's five seconds left for the miracle. And the foul by Ainge. We were down three, and Ainge runs and fouls him, rather than one more attempt at a three-pointer. That's how hot he was. That's how much he was in that zone. Ainge feared he might make a three and tie the game. He will quite obviously miss the second one. Oh, the miss, that's it. He had brought the Hawks within seconds of advancing to the Eastern Conference Finals. It was as close as they would ever get. Nothing can ever take away the memories of the game he played that day. He was the best player in the game to never win the big one.
January 28th, 1992. Dominique needs 33 points to top 20,000 for his career. But the crowning moment of a decade of dominance would have to wait. I think I, I, somebody hit me or kicked me. I turned out there. Who kicked me? I turned out no one was there. But he's in a lot of pain. Dominique nursing the ankle and I see him limping off. And I looked down my foot. It was almost straight in the air. He'd torn his Achilles tendon. Dominique returned courtside an hour later, his leg in a cast. Why did I do that? I don't know why I did that. It was an emotional moment I'll never forget. And the team just... You see the tears coming out of guys. I mean, guys was literally crying in the locker room. And uh, that's when you know people respect you. Dummy's a strong person. He'll be back. Charles, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Unbelievable. I, I, there was no one near me. I just turned and just popped. You know, See, when they carried you up on the stretcher, I knew something was, I knew it was bad then. He was like, my career is over. And I was like, no, your career is not over. You're a healthy young man. You'll be able to come back stronger than ever. By the winter of 92, Dominique was more than ready to return to his first love. It just would give me chills because I was in love with him. I had no idea how much everyone loved him. Women were just crying because they were so happy that he was back and healed. He was 33 and trying to return from major surgery. I think he had the responsibility that he felt to the city, to the franchise, to his teammates, and then to all of his family members who just put a special burden on his shoulders. Wilkins goes in and his remarkable return to form had the Hawks poised for another title run. Yeah, we were playing great leading this Eastern Conference, playing great basketball. On February 24, 1994, team president Stan Kasten came to the Wilkins house. Vividly remember Stan kind of pacing around, and he just told me, well, uh, we made a trade today, and it's uh, we traded to the Los Angeles Clippers. Atlanta traded its franchise player for the younger Danny Manning. He came over the house that night. He said, somebody, somebody hug me, somebody hug me. He was devastated. That night, the star of the South disappeared. He would never contend for an NBA title again. That's what killed him. He got pushed away. He didn't walk away. I was surprised that someone didn't go after him and pick him up. March 24th, 1994. Dominique Wilkins in a Clippers uniform for the first time. Atlanta welcomed the Hawks' all-time leading scorer back home. Wilkins tries to throw one up from the hip. He was very nervous. I'd never seen him. I mean, he was almost shaking. Wilkins going for three. The terrible first half thing. I had like four points at halftime. But the human highlight film was determined to put on a show. I just told Harper, give me the ball. Just give me the ball, get out of the way. Dominique with a hard move to the basket. It was so strange because the fans were uh, torn. Wilkins, a scoop to the hoop for Neek. I'm like, oh, I'm back home. <laughs> Dominique has come back and conquered his whole team. It would be his last starring role in the NBA. Dominique Wilkins would finish his career as a journeyman role player on mediocre teams. Contenders never took a chance on number 21. Watch out. That's what killed him. He couldn't understand what was going on. He just totally feels like they just shut him out. I'm not sure that from a distance, they really could appreciate how much winning meant to this guy. It meant so much to him, he left the country to win a title. In 1995, he signed with Panathinaikos, Athens of the Greek League. Here's Wilkins, he'll shoot it, and he'll make it. Dominique is in the groove. A wild finish at the buzzer, Panathinaikos are the European club champions, and we have Bedlam here in Paris. It's kind of bittersweet. 
Yeah, he won the championship, but it wasn't the NBA championship, and that's what his real heart's desire is. It's tough to walk. It's still tough to walk away. I watch games and I'm like, man, what is this guy doing? He was depressed. With him not having a goal, he was just lost. To the fans of Atlanta, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I love you more than you ever know. And I appreciate all the support over these years. If it could end the way you think it should end, Dominique would win his championship, be named one of the 50 greatest players in the NBA, which he should be. He wasn't recognized as one of the top 50. To me, Dominique is one of the top 25. He would still be playing right now if anybody invited him to. He pulled up, put on his shoes, socks, and go. Still, you know, get out there, shoot him. You don't lose a touch. You may lose the knees, but you don't lose a touch. <laughs>